Hey guys, I just wanted to share my thoughts about the Surface Laptop. Uh, I've got that on the right hand side and my Surface Pro 3 on the left. Uh, I've been using the new Surface Laptop for the last three weeks and I just wanted to share a couple quick thoughts. Um, so this is going to be kind of a crappy review because I'm just doing it on my cell phone here. Uh, but just bear with me. Um, if you're like me, you've probably uh, listen to all the YouTube uh, reviews of about the Surface Laptop and also uh, read a lot of the reviews as well. Uh, one of the things I've been or I was pretty concerned about was its durability and how the Alcantara uh, keyboard would live up to my oily hands. So I've got some really um, uh, sweaty palms and oily hands I guess and you can see on my Surface Pro um, three, there's a little bit of slight discoloration there uh, or wear on the keyboard. Um, and frankly, that's okay on this keyboard because it's detachable and I can easily buy a replacement uh, for about a hundred bucks or so. Um, unfortunately, on the Surface Pro or, or on the new Surface laptop, it's attached and there's no real way to replace this keyboard. And I read a lot of reviews and then people were saying that this fabric has been tested and it's really good um, and that uh, it won't stain. But I don't know if you can really call it a stain so much. It's just sort of discoloration after only two and a half, three weeks. Um, and again, some people might not experience this at all. Um, they're going to uh, say this is uh, not a problem because they have dry hands or they just don't have as oily skin as I do. Um, and uh, you'll see that there's just sort of this darkness here uh, compared to the rest of the area and that is really just from my palms and you can sort of see some kind of darkness over here um, and you might say well that's not that bad but frankly for just two and a half weeks I kind of expected better um, I think one of the problems is the fabric color here is uh, this light uh, default gray color I forget what the color um, that they the product color they call it but it's a little bit too um, uh, light in color and it doesn't hide these stains or discolorations as much. And I think it's really just, you know, your palms getting sweaty and your natural oils and your skin get transferred and, and is left here as residue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a couple things uh, to clean it. Um, so the default answer is to use some kind of really light uh, detergent. Um, it, is, it is basically a fabric uh, comprised mostly of polyester. So you could use something like a um, detergent with a mixed, a little bit of detergent mixed with the warm water and get a towel. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I don't have any detergent here at the office. So I'm going to probably use a little bit of um, dish soap, which is also, I mean, some people will say that's bad, but I, you know, frankly, I think dish soap is probably pretty gentle. Um, for fabrics uh, compared to some other other uh, industrial cleaners. So I'm going to try that on the left hand side and just see how, how it cleans off that oil. Um, on the right hand side um, it's a little bit heavier discoloration so I've also gone to the local um, auto parts store in my neighborhood and I've picked up a, a product that's specifically for um, vehicle interiors and this one is uh, just it's made by Autoglim um, and it's uh, an interior shampoo, it says. Um, so I'm going to try that. Now, one of the things I, I stay, I'm going to stay away from harsh chemicals. Um, if you ever go to a store, try not to pick up um, like all-purpose cleaner um, or products that are geared for leather or vinyl because um, that's not uh, suitable for fabrics. So, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to mask off um, portions of the keyboard, give it a clean and just see how it goes and uh, hopefully I can store it. So I'm just going to show kind of what I'm talking about here. You can see a little bit of discoloration here and it's significantly darker here. And again, it doesn't look too bad, but I think if the keyboard wasn't as light as this, uh, it wouldn't show up as much. But frankly, I've only used it for two to three weeks. so. Um, I think this is a big serious knock and if it can't be cleaned just by gentle um, soap and water, um, 
I would probably recommend staying away from this type of color or maybe even from the laptop itself if you have really sweaty palms and uh, greasy skin like I do. So uh, I'll be back. All right, I'm back guys. And you know what? I just basically used soap and water and uh, it's come out actually surprisingly well. Um, you might say that there's still a little bit of darkness here, but it is significantly better than what it was before. Um, you know, let's try the other side too. This area here was very obvious. Now it's not bad. It's actually come out really well. Um, what I'm going to suggest though is if you're going to use soap and water, you never want to just let the water just um, douse your laptop obviously in water. That's not a very good idea. Uh, what you want to do is I just took a bowl, put a couple drops of uh, dish soap in there. Uh, dish soap is nice because dish uh, soap is meant or formulated as a detergent or soap to cut through grease and food oils which is perfect for the oils in your skin. So uh, really uh, what you want to do is just dab a microfiber towel into the soap suds. You don't really need to dunk it into the water at the bottom. And you want to just wring out that corner so it's pretty dry. And after you've done that, and I can't do that with one hand here while I'm holding the camera, but uh, suffice to say, you just want to wring out that uh, towel until it's dry. And then what I did is I just sort of in circular motions, just sort of agitated the fabric. You don't really want to just go in there and just like wrench it into that fabric. Um, that's never a good idea either. All you're doing is just kind of gently kind of scrubbing or uh, gently agitating the fibers and loosening any uh, oils um, using a soap. And after that, uh, you don't you don't want to obviously rinse that down with water. All you're going to do is just take a super absorbent towel. I've got a, sort of this uh, dry uh, um, drying towel or terry cloth towel, and you can just use this to blot out any of the excess water. And if you've got a paper towel, just to be sure, you can take a dry paper towel and you can just pat it down as well to get rid of any of the excess water. And you know what? Um, I basically did that yesterday. And I let it dry, and it's um, I was wanting to see if there's any of that discoloration and come back. I mean, it's still kind of faintly sort of see some darkness here, but um, it's a lot better. So some might say that's a win for Microsoft. Uh, kudos for them selecting this uh, particular material. Seems to be pretty durable uh, and it survived a little bit of washing um, and it's come back to life. But frankly, I'm still, I'm still a little bit disappointed because that's probably a little bit more higher maintenance for a laptop than most people would care to do. I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a monthly ritual for me to clean my laptop um, uh, palm area. That just seems sort of unreasonable. A couple other things about this laptop. I mean, overall, otherwise, I mean, it's a, a great, uh, great design, you know, uh, very MacBook-esque. And um, a lot of people really love this whole uh, design of being able to lift the cover with one um, hand or uh, you know, I never understood why that's so important frankly I, it doesn't matter to me um, you know it's but it's got that uh, classy aluminum construction that everyone loves about Apple products you know the surface pen works on it although you know I really wish that this screen they should have made the hinge uh, flip over like a most two-in-one so that you could actually have or at least have this screen be able to go flat so you could write on it. I mean, what's the point of having a touch screen and a uh, pen um, compatibility if you can't really use it on this laptop? Because even if you try to write on it, the screen just kind of is not a stable writing surface for a pen. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's a good laptop. Um, however, the other thing that I was going to say, sorry about the focus. Um, the other thing I was going to say is this laptop is all completely sealed. As beautiful as it looks, just look on the back, the bottom side, there are no screw points. There's no way for a normal user to gain access to any of the internals of this laptop, whether to replace or repair uh, for uh, servicing or upgrades. Um, and that's an important consideration when you think about the context of the battery. So if, you've, if you're like me, you've probably owned multiple, several, um, um, cell phones by this point and uh, you know your cell phone battery uh, after a couple years sort of doesn't hold its charge and you 
if you are lucky to have a phone that has a user um, serviceable or replaceable battery, you just buy another battery. But in the case of this laptop, uh, you can't access the battery. It's completely sealed in there. The only way to access it is if you were to cut that fabric, um, fabric uh, keyboard off um, and uh, that would um, completely destroy that keyboard and, and uh, you know you wouldn't be able to use this laptop anymore. So frankly, this is a one-time use battery only um, in about four to five years. You're, it's not going to hold as much charge as it used to. You're basically looking at buying a new laptop at the time. And maybe for some people, you know, using a laptop to four to five years is sufficient. Uh, but frankly, I kind of I have a couple laptops which have lasted me more than some of them almost ten years, um, and they're still going strong. Um, and so when I buy a laptop these days, I'm kind of expecting the life um, cycle of that product to be at least five years plus. Um, and I expect that might be a problem with this particular design. Um, I mean, even on some of the MacBooks, you can have access to some of the internals by taking some screws off. Um, I just, this is completely unserviceable. The other thing to consider is your um, data is all on a hard drive, which is soldered onto the main board. So, you know, after maybe three, four years, you have stored some um, uh, files, photos, videos, uh, documents uh, that are important to you on your laptop. And if you're smart, obviously you would have everything backed up or you have it on the cloud. But what if you don't have an active backup on one of these couple of documents that you need, whether for work or for school that you were just working on and your motherboard goes? Now, in most other laptops, if it's your motherboard that goes, um, you can just open up your laptop and you probably have access to the hard drive. You just unplug it out of this one and then plug it into another uh, adapter or, or plug it into your computer, another computer. Um, then not so with this one. So that's also another consideration. Um, this, this hard drive is completely soldered to the main board. You're not gonna be able to get your data off of there. Uh, unless you send it in to some expensive data recovery service um, where they might have abilities to uh, desolder the chips off the main board and, and put it back onto another functioning main board and get your data off there. Um, but for most people, it's not really going to be something that we can easily do, or at least for reasonable amounts of money. So two knocks. Uh, fabric keyboard, yeah, big consideration, especially if you have oiled hands. Secondly, think about that uh, battery life. Uh, if you've owned a cell phone, uh, this is basically uh, really um, a big cell phone that you're gonna basically have to replace after you know sometime between three to five years, uh, just because the battery life will be nowhere near as what it used to be. And thirdly, um, I was gonna mention uh, the screen, as much as it's nice and bright and colorful, uh, the design, it's, it's too bad that it doesn't flip over onto its back and that you can use uh, the pen. Even though the Surface Pen is compatible with the screen here, you can't really write on it because of the way that this particular laptop is designed. It's not, the screen is not very stable. So those are my quick thoughts. Hope that helps when you're uh, making a decision to buy this product or not. Take care.